In this tutorial, I'm just going to be talking about the video itself. And I believe I mentioned in my overview, my live can't um, import a video file such as an AVI file or a QuickTime file, etc. It can't import those type of files. It has to import an image sequence. Now, an image sequence is just basically a whole bunch of pictures, just normal pictures that you would save from a still camera. And when it plays them back, it makes a video sequence just like how your AVI file does it, only when the AVI file does it, for the sake of file space, it'll compress multiple frames together, and this results in a smaller file, but it's much more confusing when um, my live goes to open up the AVI file, it has to then separate all the frames, it has to deal with different bit rates, and um, it just gets a heck of a lot more confusing. So it's much simpler for you and it to simply work with image sequences, once again just a sequence of pictures, because that's basically what a AVI file is made up of. Um, to convert your AVI file, or any video file format for that matter, into a image sequence, um, you have a couple of routes you can take. Most video editors actually have an export option for export as image sequence, but if you don't have one, I would recommend um, Virtual Dub. You can download it for free. Just Google it and it should be virtualdub.org. It's very handy. I use it for a lot of different conversions. And once you've downloaded it and installed it, you should be able to run it and then just go to file open video file load your video and click open so now I'll just give you a quick over I'll just give you a quick overview of virtual dub um, this window represents the edited footage and this window is the original footage down here we have our timeline click here and it will play the original footage and if you click the second play button it will play both of the footages and this one will return the animation to its start and that's basically it so the m m probably most useful feature of this program is going to file export image sequence and then you can just export your image sequence um, but before you do this um, I want to talk to you about Im the video's resolution now this video right here that we're working with is an HD file which most video cameras today um, use but the problem with that is you actually have more pixels than you actually need to track when you're tracking video you can actually well in my case I found you can cut the video size in half and still get a perfectly clean track out of it so what we're going to do that in virtual dub using a filter um, while you're in here you should also take down the um, frame rate this video plays at 30 frames per second and it's important to remember this so when you go back to Maya with your completed track and you're resetting up your scene you'll want to set Maya's frame rate to 30 frames per second. By default Maya's um, frame rate is 24 frames per second and it will cause your video to appear to be slowed down. Back to virtual dub so like I said to reduce the resolution of the image go to video filters and just add a filter we have a two to one reduction I selected the high quality one you can select either of them they both work and click OK and the reason we can get away with this is you gotta remember also this image sequence we won't actually be using this image sequence for the background when we composite our geometry after we've rendered it um, back into the scene we're not going to be using this this is really this video footage will only be used for my live so we can reduce the quality of it and no one will be the wiser. Um, now we're going to go to File, Export, Image Sequence, and first set your file name. We'll just call it SQ. Um, your suffix. Um, we'll just leave it as a JPEG. But if you see, if we change the file format, it will change the um, suffix automatically for you. Um, something I should talk about you now is file to you is now is file formats. Um, normally, when you're working in computer graphics, you probably have learned by now to run as far away from as you can JPEG file formats because they compress the images and it really um, reduces the quality. But in the case of video tracking, you can get away with a bit of compression. Uh, I normally have a 90% compression, 
and it creates a relatively small files for when you have a large image sequence say over 500 frames it's important to keep your file size down because 500 um, individual pictures will quickly take up gigabytes of your hard drive and you'll use up more RAM etc um, so I normally save with a compression of 90 percent as a JPEG file format um, another option would be use a ping. I don't recommend using the quick compression. There's some compatibility issues with that I found. Um, a ping file, it's um, complete. Um, it's a lossless file format, so there won't be any compression artifacts or something, something like that. So that's if you don't want to worry about compression. Um, or a TGA file format, that's another good file format to use, really. If you're not, if you're worried about compression, TGA or a ping, I'd use either one of those, and I would not use a Windows bitmap file format. Simply, in my personal opinion, it creates larger, a larger file than necessary normally, and it's just not compatible with different operating systems. I know I'm using an AVI file format, which seems weird saying that, but I normally like to stick with a ping or a TGA. So you have a uh, file name, uh, suffix is already set for us, and now the minimum number of digits in, now this is the buffer, and I always set this to zero, and it will normally work just fine with Maya. Now different buffers can cause Maya to act differently, but f I normally just leave mine at zero, and it will almost, it seems to always work for me. And now your directory, this is just a folder that will contain all your image files. So from there, click OK. It'll spew out the images. Look in the folder. And now we have our image sequence. You see they're just a whole bunch of individual pictures. Now something else you now there's another way of exporting an image sequence. Um, if you don't want to download um, virtual dub or you don't have another video editing program on your computer, there's a way of doing it directly from Maya and I highly do not recommend this technique. I'm just showing you because it's kind of cool knowing that you can, but I don't recommend it. It's just a bit hackish. So just open up Maya, new scene, make it completely empty. Then go to view, um, select camera, open up the attributes editor, then go to image plane, create image plane, it's under the environment tag and load your video because Maya, unlike Maya Live, can actually load a video file and something very important to note about video files in Maya they start at frame 0 not at frame 1 so you'll need to go down to your timeline and set it to frame 0 and this video sequence is um, 91 frames long but in case you don't know how long it is normally what I'll do is I'll just enter a high number then scrub the animation frame by frame oh wait one last thing you have to do when you um, initially import your AVI file make sure you check use image sequence otherwise it won't play the animation it'll just display the first frame so as I was saying I scrub the animation and wait for the AVI to stop which in this case it stops at frame 91 so I'll set my timeline to 91 frames. And the next thing we're going to do is open up the render settings window. And basically what we're going to do is just simply render our video and when my renders it, it renders to an image sequence by default. So we just kind of used Maya to fix our own problem. And once again the file formats are completely up to you. In this case I'll actually would recommend using an IFF file format um, it's a good file format. I try and use it as much as I can. If all your programs can open it, I'd recommend using it. If not, I'd recommend using something such as a TGA or a ping again. Once again, you'd want to. Um, you could also use a JPEG here, but Maya's JPEG compression is a bit sketchy. So, my IFF. And now for the image format, it's important that you have it set to. Um, name, number, then followed by um, name, then the frame number, followed by the extension. And the reason for that is Maya is very finicky about this. That's why I was talking to you about the frame padding before. Um, normally, as a rule, I always have my image sequences named the name, followed by the number, followed by the extension. And if you were to say remove the name, that won't work because Maya requires that um, your 
image sequences do have a valid um, name to them. It just can't be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has to have a name. Um, the extension always should be last, I found, though sometimes you can run the extension and then followed by the number. But normally I just stick with this. It's solid and it works almost every time. Well, works every time, actually. Um, the next thing we're going to do is set the resolution. Um, the quickest way to do that is set it to HD, which was our initial resolution for our video. And we're going to do the same thing um, we did in Virtual Dub and cut the resolution in half. So what I'll do is I'll check maintain width and height ratio, then set the width to 640. And my will automatically fill in the height with 360, which is the equivalent of cutting this image um, original HD resolution in half. And now up here we've already set the um, file, I mean the frame and animation extensions. And we'll give it a name. This is something. This will be the name of our sequence. Now we want the start frame to be zero, like I mentioned to you before. And the end frame, as we found out, is 91. And you can preview how your files will be named up here in the file name, and then 2. And then go to Render, Batch Render, and click Batch Render and Close. This should take a second. Okay, now that that's done, we have our image sequence rendered from Maya. And we can find our image sequence in your documents, Maya Projects Default Images. And simply look for your name of your image sequence. I'll be just simply cutting it out and moving it so it'll be a little easier to see. Be putting it in here with the image sequence we exported from Virtual Dub. And now we would just simply load those sequences back into Maya. Show you a quick example of that. We'll go to Live, Scene, New Match Move. Don't save. We don't really need the attributes that are open. And for our full resolution images, we're not using a proxy image. I'll explain to you a proxy image in one second. And the, probably actually I'll do that in the next tutorial. Load up your video and virtual I mean my live will automatically set your timeline to the length of the image sequence and you're ready to start tracking your video as you can see it works with both file formats really it's whichever file format works for you and your production pipeline um, thanks for watching this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll begin looking at my live as by, by itself